Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Here is another tutorial for this resin art piece I call Ember. First and foremost, make sure you protect yourself and your workspace. I will link below my blog post on how I prepare to work with resin. For this piece, I used Promarine Epoxy Resin, a variety of acrylic paints, um, some crushed vase filler, some tiger's eye stones, fire glass, crushed shells, and a wooden panel. I will link all of my materials in the description box below, so if you'd like to try this at home, you can use the exact same things that I used for this piece. All right, I'm just going to jump right in. Um, I used the Promarine Epoxy Resin. Make sure you're in a ventilated space. Um, it's really easy to use. You just measure out equal parts of the resin and the hardener. Um, you mix them for three minutes, nice and thoroughly, and then you pour it in another cup and mix for an additional three minutes. And then I just split it into smaller cups, added my pigment, my silicone, and I was ready to go. All right, I'm just going to jump right into the video and show you all the steps I took. Um, first and foremost, I started making the center of my geode. I used a dark brown mixed with a metallic black in this tinted resin, and I just poured a um, circular shape a little bit off center on my panel, and I am outlining it with some bronze fire glass. Um, I didn't have this in the photo of the supplies because I ran out, but I will make sure to put it in the description box below, so if you would like to purchase the same kind, you are able to do so. This video is a little slower than I normally show you my time lapses, but I wanted to be able to give you a more thorough description of what I'm doing, um, since that seems to be received a little better. Um, so right now I am pouring into a cup a white and copper mixture. Um, they don't mix together as much as they kind of create some cool patterning when it's poured out of the cup. Um, it's a little hard to see because of the white, but once it dries, you'll be able to see how those colors interacted. So here I'm just going in with my black and outlining that. Um, obviously, you can tell it's not a perfect outline, but I like kind of being a little messy about it because it gives it some character and the colors are going to blend together anyway. Um, so it just makes the shapes a little less perfect and gives it kind of that real... <sighs> I guess, natural shapes. They're not just round rings. I'm really just trying to follow the same pattern of kind of outlining that center, but I don't want it to be super circular. Like I want it to be a little bumpy around the edges. So it being messy isn't really a concern. Um, here I am pouring the resin that's mixed with that Maron gold powder. It's a little bit more bronze than a true gold, but it is beautiful when it dries. So that is what I poured there, and then I'm going in with my um, Stardust Micah's gold. It is more of a true gold, and it is also stunning. So then I'm just adding some copper to that, and you can see as that copper and that gold blend together, it's creating some cells, and they are beautiful. Um, so then I just poured some white and I am going in with that bronzy gold again and I'm just going to keep doing the same circular motion with all of my colors. So I am, there's a dark brown there and now there is more of a true brown and I'm just going to keep repeating that shape because um, as you can see with the silicone added, the resin is kind of taken on a mind of its own and it's not staying in those defined rings, it's spreading out and kind of creating its own shapes. So I'm um, just repeating that step. Here's another white and I am just kind of keeping that contrast. I'm not pouring layers that are too similar next to each other um, because as they blend together, I want it to create some cool feathering effects and not just meld with similar colors. So I know this is a lot of the same, but I really just wanted to show you every step um, in as close to real time as I think everyone would put up with. Um, you can let me know in the comments if you prefer the sped up videos or the real time videos, and I will keep that in mind for my future videos um, just so that I know what you guys like to see. But here I'm getting really close to um, covering the entire panel with my rings. You can see in that center section how those colors are starting to interact with each other. Um, it's so cool. I'll show you photos um, when this video is done and you'll be able to see the cells, um, the cool blending effects. And it just, it really 
is so cool every time you get a different effect because the silicone and the resin it kind of has a mind of its own and you just have to wait for it to dry to see what it's going to look like um, which is one of my favorite things about resin art um, but here I'm just going in and coating those sides um, the parts that the resin hasn't dripped over I like to let the resin drip over the sides of my paintings. I just think it gives it a cool effect. I know some people are a little bit more particular with that. Um, I've definitely done pieces where I've taped the sides and just painted them black after the fact. Um, like my tiger's eye piece that I posted a few weeks ago. But um, when I'm just doing pieces for myself, I like to leave those drips because I think it gives it a really cool look and it just carries the art onto the sides of the piece as well. So I just am kind of tapping the resin around the sides and making sure it's all coated. Now it's time to go in and do some of my detailing. So I'm going to start with my crushed shell pieces. Um, I picked these up at Walmart. It was maybe $5 for a big bag of them. I love them so much and they come in a couple different colors. These are just a tan and white variety. So I am pouring them along kind of where this gold is sitting. Um, I know that as the resin dries it's going to shift a little bit but I'm using that as my guideline and I'm just kind of putting a whole bunch on there. Um, they're extra shiny and I like the way they reflect light so I like to um, put a whole bunch of them. So I'm outlining that gold stripe and then I am going to take my tiger's eye pieces and I'm going to outline that dark brown um, black area with those. And um, I also take a little bit of the tiger's eye around that center section um, just to give it some depth because they have a lot of different color in them whereas the bronze fire glass that I used is all one shade so I'm just adding more of those stones and kind of following the shape that that um, center area has taken on just to give it a little bit more of that detailing so then I'm taking more of my shell pieces and following the gold around the center just to define those rings and give it texture, some extra shine, um, and just really make it a 3D piece here. So you can see I dropped one in the wrong spot, but it's nothing that I couldn't fix with a little popsicle stick. Um, and then I'm just going in with more of those tiger's eye stones, um, outlining some of those shells. And then the last thing I'm going to add in is I have some brown vase filler and they're just a little bit of a deeper color. Um, so I added those in around the tiger's eye and some clear fire glass and vase filler around those shell pieces. So when I show you um, a close up, you'll be able to see those a little bit easier. It's a little hard um, in the video to capture the clear because it just blends into the resin a little bit. Um, but it actually looks really, really cool when the pieces dry. So from here I have pretty much um, outlined everything I want to do, so I'm just adding in a little bit of extra stones or shells wherever I see fit, and then once I am done that I just take a little bit of my extra resin and I'm going to go in and add some more details, but this is just the finishing touches spot. Um, it's really only just because I had some extra materials and I didn't want to let them go to waste because um, I'm pretty happy with the piece at this stage and I'm just using these extra things because I have them handy. So here I'm going in with some of my darker resin just to add some of that contrast um, and then I'm going to take more of my gold. So here I'm tilting it just a little bit. I'm pretty sure my basement floor is just a tiny bit not level. Um, I measure with my phone level app before I start and it always says it's level but it always shifts just a tiny bit. Um, so it could be my house, but you know, what you gonna do about that? But here I'm just taking my, um, you can see I just did a little gold line through there, and then I'm gonna take my heat gun and blend it in a little bit. Um, just gives it a little extra pop of color in those darker areas, just cause I like gold and I like to be a little extra and make things extra shiny. So um, the heat gun also pops the air bubbles so it's good to just do a quick run over the whole piece. Um, that's an important step when working with resin otherwise you'll get lots of bubbles in your piece and you don't want that. Um, but yeah so here 
Like I said, just the last finishing touches, I'm outlining that center um, that almost looks like a flame in the dark brown and the gold, and then I am done. So just tilting it one last time, and then I let it sit overnight, and here is the result of that. So I was really pleased with this, but I did want to add lines, so I used my Posca paint pen markers. I will link them in the description. And here are some photos of how I did those outlines. I had actually recorded a video to do that, but my phone crashed and I lost it. Um, and I just couldn't bear to erase it all and start over because I was really pleased with the way it had turned out. But basically I just kind of outline each um, section where those colors are and just kind of wing it and see what I like, what looks good to me. And if I don't like it, then I just get some Windex and a paper towel and um, most of them come off. I found that the metallics and the blacks are a little harder to remove, um, but all the other colors come off very easily. So here is the final result. Um, let me know what you think about this piece. If you enjoyed it, I would love it if you would subscribe or um, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, let me know what you liked about it, and I will be back very soon with some more videos for you. Thank you everyone for watching, and I will see you next time.